Hi there, Serdar Yegulov here from InfoWorld at IDG. Today I'll be showing pipenv, a system for creating and managing virtual environments and packages in your Python projects. It gives developers a way to reliably reproduce the environment they use to develop a project so that everyone uses the same versions of things and follows the same steps to get it set up and running. For this demo, the first thing I'm going to do is get pipenv set up in my Python installation. Because pipenv manages virtual environments and packages, I can't really install it in a virtual environment. I have to install it in my base underlying Python installation. To do this, all I have to do is type pip install pipenv. Now, one other option that I could use at this stage is to add the user flag to install pipenv for me alone. This way it's not actually installed in my base Python installation as a hedge against something going wrong. So in fact, I'm going to do just that. I should also note that if I do this, the installer may complain that the place where pipenv puts its executables isn't in my path. But I took steps earlier to make sure I don't get that error. So be aware that you might get that error if you do this yourself. Now let's use pipenv to create a new project. What I have here is an empty folder, which I will launch a command line in. And from there, I just type pipenv dash dash python 3.8 to specify which version of Python to use to initialize a project there. Once the initialization is finished, we can look at the folder, and you'll notice that we don't have a virtual environment subfolder in it. And that's because pipenv manages virtual environments for projects by keeping them in a subdirectory of your user profile directory. If I want to use that virtual environment directly, I can just type pipenv shell and launch a shell session based on that virtual environment. Also, many IDEs, like Visual Studio Code, which I'll be using for this demo, recognize pipenv files and will configure a project to use the virtual environment specified in it. So what do we have in this folder? Well, right now there's only a single file, pip file. This is a plain text file that tells us where pipenv will get packages from for the project, and which packages and what versions to use, and also what version of Python is needed. Whatever you do, don't edit this file directly. Use pipenv from the command line to make any changes to it. For instance, for the project I'm about to demonstrate, we'll need the piglet graphics library. So we will install that using pipenv pipenv install piglet version 1.5.5. This is the same syntax we would use for pip itself, so you don't have to retool your habits a great deal to switch from using regular pip to using pipenv. Now, once that's finished, you'll notice we have another file in the directory, pipfile.lock. This describes all the versions of all the packages installed for the project, including hashes generated from them. This way, we can ensure, both to ourselves and others, that the files we've installed are, in fact, the right files. Just installing something with the same file name isn't always enough. It has to be bit identical to the version we used before to guarantee that we are, in fact, getting the same thing. Now, let's populate this folder with a couple of Python files for our project and launch Visual Studio Code on this folder and select the virtual environment that was created with it for pipenv. You should note that Visual Studio Code gives us the option to use the virtual environment pipenv created and so that way we can spawn a shell session using it in Visual Studio Code and run the program with it. One other thing that pipenv will do for us is it separates development requirements from runtime requirements. For instance, one of the tools I use most commonly in development is the black formatting tool. Now I want to add that to this project, but I don't want to add it as a runtime dependency. I only want to run it as a development dependency. So I would type pipenv install dash d for development and the version of black that I want to install. And this will install black. And as you can see in the pip file, it's going to be listed separately from piglet. Finally, pipenv gives us something plain old pip doesn't, which is dependency tracking. The pipenv graph command will show us what I have installed and which packages depend on which. This way, you can see how all of the packages in a given project travel together with each other. They have to be treated as a single unit. Finally, I should point out that you don't have to start an entire project from scratch to take advantage of pipenv. For instance, if you run pipenv install in an existing project that has a requirements.txt file, it'll create a virtual environment, import everything from requirements.txt, and generate a pip file from it. This way you can migrate existing projects to pipenv without too much headache. If you like this video, please leave a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to the IDG Tech Talk channel on YouTube, and for more Python tips, be sure to follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and InfoWorld.com.